Hello, this is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. So the Scotch game is a good beginning for white and it starts with uh, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then d4. So this is the beginning of the Scotch game. Now I don't play the Scotch, so if we look at it from from Black's perspective, there are a number of sort of moves from this point. So obviously the thing you would do is capture. The opponent will capture back with knight. And in this position, the most typical move will be bishop to c5. And that's the classical variation. It's the variation I've played the most. And I don't do well. White usually wins, uh, well, white has won 60% of the games um, where I have played this. Uh, I think I've played this about 20 times on chess.com. Uh, occasionally I have played knight f6, uh, and that is the Schmidt uh, variation, but today in a game I played something called the Steinitz uh, variation with Queen h4. So let's have a look. So in this game I managed to win in just 21 moves. Uh, played okay, you know, almost 80% accurate, uh, slightly more accurate than the opponent. Uh, some ups and downs, but managed to clinch the win. Let's have a look at the analysis now. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, uh, and d4, the beginning of the scotch. Capture, capture back, and now the Steinitz variation response with queen to h4, uh, potentially attacking that pawn. So obviously that pawn uh, can't move forward. Um, to, uh, you know, the queen is attacking, you know, sorry, that pawn. That pawn can't go forward to defend because it's pinned to the king. Uh, if you try to push that pawn, that would be very foolish because that would be an attack on the king and also opening up a uh, an attack on the rook. So potentially quite a forcing move. And the interesting thing is when I looked at the lead chess uh, database, this move is not common in the scotch. It's the eighth most common response by black. And in fact, it's the only response uh, with black in uh, community games, so low, relatively low rated community games, Blitz and Rapid, where black has a substantial advantage over white in the proportion of games won. In fact, over 50%, about 54% of the time, black won uh, with the Steinitz variation, better than any other response. Uh, that is different from Masters games. In Masters games, this is terrible. Um, so this is a dubious response, uh, but it seems to work okay for sort of recreation community games. Now how did my opponent respond to, you know, this threat? Uh, very interesting. So I think this is the Horwitz uh, attack, so potentially looking at attacking and capturing my c7 pawn, which of course comes with a fork of my king and rook. Uh, here I thought for a while, I thought that that is okay, even if I lose my rook, the rooks, um, you know, always be potentially happy to lose your rook given it's no, not really participating in the game and that will take out their only active piece at the moment. So I decided to bring a bishop out. Now, of course, this, um, this means that we are on the verge of a potential scholar's mate. So they must do something about this. Uh, the opponent played queen e2, which was the best move. Uh, but now I've got uh, knight d4. So Stockfish reckons queen all the way back to d8 is the best move. And the, the and I think part of the logic here is, is that fundamentally um, the Steinitz variation, you know, at the highest level, you know, obviously according to Stockfish, is unsound. It's just unsound. And so if white plays perfectly, it will be punished. Uh, and so it suggests getting the queen back defending that pawn. However, uh, if you were going to take that perspective, uh, you should have never played queen in the first place. So I do not believe that that is the best move. You're playing super aggressively, must keep up the aggro, must keep up the attack. So here, potential attack, and of course, if the queen potentially moves out of the way, it's no longer a defender there. Again, 
the impending scholars mate. So the opponent does need to do something, and here they sort of kind of abort, I think, their attack. They capture, and that is best, uh, and bishop captures back. And in fact, this is um, why I think the Horwitz attack, you know, on this is actually almost kind of like a red herring, you know, with the correct move, they actually can't take because of the attack on the queen. Now, with the ongoing attack, you know, one of the things when you're super aggro attacking the king, you know, it potentially induces errors and blunders in the opponent. So this is okay. I thought I want to keep up the pressure on that. So I decide to move the bishop all the way back. Um, you know, I know Stockfish this is, but you know, you're basically uh, forced to move the bishop another time with another pawn move. So I thought let's move all the way back to b6. Uh, now, bishop e3, and this is a straight up mistake because the queen can straight up take that pawn. Now here I did see that, but I thought, you know, I might potentially do something tricky. That, you know, am I really worried about that pawn? I'm not, yeah, not really. So I decide to develop the piece. So um, again, Stockfish didn't like this. It wants me to basically, you know, you know, <laughs> do what you need to do, cash out now. My problem with that is if I make that move, uh, the opponent can force a queen trade. I didn't really want to lose my queen yet. Um, you know, moving the bishop, they can force a queen trade. So I didn't really want to do that at this time. They push, uh, push the pawn to e5, which makes a lot of sense. Now knight d5 attacking the bishop. What are they going to do? And here they felt the need to, uh, to, no, to try to kick, uh, kick the queen. And of course, that's not a good idea. Pushing the king side pawns, that substantially now weakens that diagonal. The king is on that diagonal. Not good. So now queen... Uh, to e4. I was very gratified to see that that was a good move and you can see now almost minus two. So even though that this was a dubious move, you know, white was definitely ahead, uh, you know, it's tricky. And now with a few sort of a uh, few little errors on the opponent's part, now minus two. So they capture, which is fine. I now capture that rook. So that is fine. Obviously they're forced to move that bishop again. That is good. Now here, I have to admit, I wasn't entirely sure what to do. Uh, I thought about, yeah, doing this and this, um, but I thought, look, I'm here, let's just decimate the king's side defense, force the king to do something on this side. They've already pushed a pawn here. Uh, potentially, I thought maybe in the longer term would be good. Um, no, Stockfish doesn't agree, um, but I'm still a little bit ahead. And this also potentially gives me a way of evacuating the queen as well. You know, obviously with doing something like this, you do risk potentially getting, getting your queen trapped. Uh, developing a knight, yeah, I think that makes sense. I decided to short castles um, just to get the king out of line of, uh, of a potential uh, discovered check. I, I didn't think that was an immediate risk, but by doing this, a more conservative move, I thought I'd just remove that risk. As you can see, um, they uh, Stockfish reckon evacuating the queen was the best initial move. Nonetheless, I didn't get punished. The opponent now decided to long castle. Uh, I moved my queen all the way here, potentially seeing that, you know, I can sort of route my queen to the other side. C4, again, pushing a pawn in front of the king. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's a little bit risky. Here, I decide to play another very aggressive move. So looking to attacking the pawn on A2. And in fact, I miss a potential tactic uh, by the opponent where they could, um, move the bishop to c5 and that comes with a fork. It's potentially okay because you know I can still still capture with check and then move the uh, move the rook out of the way. Uh, but you know that potentially gives the opponent some very good uh, counter attack. And you will see you know this almost brings us back basically to equality. But are they going to punish it? Because if they do do something that is coming. Ah and here the opponent thought, no, nope, they had to they had to do something about that pawn, you know, maybe having some uh, second thoughts about here and decide to make a king move and that gives the advantage all the way back to me again. So here, queen to a6, you know, a mate in one threat, they have to do something about that threat. a3, that makes sense, that's a good move. 
Uh, and here I moved queen back to g, uh, g6 with, uh, with check, uh, and I was potentially hoping that the opponent will make another king move, uh, because then that would potentially be uh, very, uh, very good um, for me. So for instance, if, um, if the opponent so moves the king over here, that now comes with check, and I, I could capture. Uh, I could capture that bishop. Uh, alternatively, you know, if they accidentally move the king here, then that would be straight up checkmate. Um, however, they they uh, you know they didn't blunder like that. They made what I thought was um, was a probably reasonable move. So apparently, you know, the uh, uh, stockfish thought um, so um, maybe pushing the queen there would be good, but they blocked with the knight, which made a lot of sense here. To that. I thought, okay, that's being attacked, but that that knight's, yeah, not doing anything. What are you going to do? They capture, I capture back, so still minus five. And here the opponent makes the sort of last mistake because that's all in the diagonal, basically in trouble. And more than that, a pawn move creates a discovered check. So a very, very powerful move now. Bishop g4, and my opponent here opted to resign. Good game, GG. Two takeaways from this game. One, relentless aggressive attacks can be an effective strategy in beginner intermediate games. And two, be careful pushing your kingside pawns when the queen is attacking the king. I hope you found this video interesting and thanks for watching.